Okay, we are on the exponential growth factor now. So we're talking about the growth factor. And here is the graph that you are used to seeing. We've got A times the quantity of 1 plus R to the T. This is the growth factor, that 1 plus R. That is what it's growing by every single time. Okay, that's the growth factor that we're talking about. So an example, 3 in January 1993, there were about 1,313,000 Internet hosts. During the next five years, the number of hosts increases by about 100% per year. Write a model giving the number in millions of hosts T years after 1993 about how many hosts were there in 1996. Well, here's the equation for growth factor. We know what A is. A, right here, it says what the initial we started with in 93, and that was 1,313,000, so that goes in for A. R is the rate. That's what it stands for. R is the 100%. It says it went up at 100%. So that means I'm putting a 100% in there. Now, writing 100% as a decimal means you move it two places over. And when you move it two places over, that's actually a 1. So it's 1.0. So really, I'm plugging a 1 in there. So it's 1 plus 1. And we have the T in there. So really, it's 1,313,000 times 2 to the T. This is write a model, which we have, about how many hosts were there in 96. Well, if it started in 93, and now they want to know how many it is in 96, how many years is the difference between there? Well, between 93 and 96, there's three years, which means T is 3. So I plug in a 3 for T. 2 to the third is 8. And 8 times 1,313,000 is approximately 10,500,000. And think about it. This is, you know, a pretty good estimate. In 1993, there was 1,313,000 Internet hosts. And in three years, look how many there were. Can you imagine how many different Internet hosts there are now? It would be insane. There's probably billions and billions and billions of them. So keep that in mind. The Internet in 1993 started out very small. Not too many people understood it or how to use it. But eventually, over time, things grow. And things grow exponentially, which is what we are talking about in this problem. So now we want to graph that using the graphing calculator. We want to graph that equation. So when you graph that, what I want you to do when you're graphing this is you go to Y equals, right? So we go to Y equals, type in 1, 3, 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, then times 2, caret sign, and then an X. And you go to graph. What I want you to do now is I want you to look at the table and find out when the graph is at 30 million. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to second graph and look at our list. We're going to try to find where 30 million is. And we find out that 30 million is about 4.5. The reason being is you look at 2.1, that's saying that it's about 21 million. If we look at uh, number 5, if x equals 5, we have about 42 million, which means it has to be somewhere in the middle is about 30 million, somewhere in between 4 and 5. So we're estimating that it's about four and a half years before we get closer to 30 million people. Compound interest formula. All right, and we got it stated as P times the quantity of 1 plus R over N times N to the T. So, or sorry, uh, to the quantity of NT. When we're filling this in, let's make sure we know what every single item means. P is the principal amount of money that we're putting in. It's the money that we put in. All right, it's the money we're depositing in. These R right here, the R stands for rate, but this is very crucial. The rate needs to be written as a uh, decimal. You're going to see rate as a percent. You're going to need to move the decimal point two spots over to get it to be written as an actual decimal. N, N stands for the number of times it's compounded each year. So if I said to you quarterly, that means it's compounded four times a year. If I said annually, that means it's compounded once a year. If I said monthly, that means it's compounded 12 times a year. And T stands for time, and time needs to be in years. That is very important. See how it's the years there. I need you to make sure that you are doing time in years when you are doing these problems. So with example four, it says you deposit 1000 into an account that pays 8% annual interest, find the balance after one year if the interest is compounded with the given frequency. So annually, 
In this formula, we know what P is. P is 1,000. We also know R. R is the rate, which is 8%, which we'd write as 0 0.08. We know how many years it's being calculated. T is one year. The only thing that we don't know right now is what N is, and this is saying annually. So when I go to plug that in, that is my N. And annually stands for 1. So according to this formula, I plug 1,000 in for P. I plug 0 0.08 in for R. T is 1. And everywhere where there's an N, I'm plugging in a 1 into the formula. So here it is. I have 1,000. I have 0 0.08. I have 1 for my N's and 1 for the years. So we end up, when you plug that all in, into your calculator, it's 1,000 times the quantity of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 1 to the 1 times 1 power. You can plug that all in on one shot into your calculator and you get 1,080. What that answer means is after one year, you made 80 bucks. You started with or you started with $1,000. You now have $80 that you made. Calculating quarterly. When you're doing quarterly, you plug in a four because that means quarter as in four times a year is what we're talking about here. So if you plug it in for four, that means N is now four. Everything else is the same. Still plug a thousand in there. Still plug in 0 .08 there. Still plug in a one for T. However, N is now four. That's the only thing that changes. So taking a look over here, I need to plug in. As I said, it's as if you plugged a four in. So I plugged a four in for n and when I do that you end up getting 1082.3 for your answer and finally let's calculate daily that means n is 365 because there's 365 days in the year so here's the formula again once again P is still a thousand R is still 0 0.08 for the rate T is still one it's just now n is 365 so I plug in 365 here for n and I find out I get 1,083.28. Just something simple to keep in mind. Notice, as N goes up, so does the money. M was 1, and look, it was 1,080. When M was 4 times a year, it was 1,082.43. And when N was 365, notice how it's now 1,083.28. So there's your homework for tonight. And if for some reason you need any help, please feel free to email me. Thank you.